you, uh, Mr. Parsons. Do I have a second? Thank I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Sakowicza. Uh, would you certify, please? Madam Chair, I'm going to be certified to the best of our knowledge on the public business matters not to be exempted from open meeting requirements and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion relating to the executive session heard, discussed, or considered in executive session. Those being Code 2.2-371A1 personnel and Code number 2.2. 3711 8 consultation with legal counsel. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Thank you, Mr. Sakowicza. Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Garrett? Yes. Myself? Yes. We'll stand at this time for invitation and pledge Mr. Sakowicza. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity again to meet and make decisions and do things with our school system and our children. Continue to be with this school system, our employees, our kids and parents, and guide us to, to be in safe and to help these children in every way we can. In the name of your precious Son, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank2020-21 Employees of the Month. Uh, first of all, I'd like to recognize our Support Employees of the Month, Ms. Jenna Addington and Patsy Bush. Thank you very much. It's a little unusual this time. In fact, both of our teacher and our sport employee of the month, the recommendations came in pairs. So we had two employees with one recommendation. I understand that this nomination is supposed to be a singular honor. However, I find it difficult to separate our dynamic duo. I sincerely hope it will still be considered. Since the onset of COVID-19 nearly six months ago, Ms. Jenna Addington and Ms. Patsy Bush have been on the front lines and phone lines at Castlewood High School. Despite the fact that an uncharted and unprecedented pan pandemic 
leveled the entire nation. These two ladies kept CHS home front up and running for our students. They reported to work and manned their desks dutifully, as they always had, and if they were scared, worried, or concerned about their own health or personal safety, they never let it show. It was their priority to serve the Castlewood community, but most importantly, to assist the students. In the time of uncertainty, Jen, Jenna and Patsy were a constant and consistent contact and source of information. Their ability to conduct business as usual, calmly and tactfully, has been a wildly impressive feat. Ms. Jenna and Ms. Patsy are two of the most dedicated members, members of our Castlewood family. They work seamlessly together. The right hand always knows what the left is doing. As the faces and voices of our visitors, as the first faces and voices our visitors see and hear, they create a warm, welcoming atmosphere that has the ability to transcend even the coronavirus. I'm grateful for their hard work now more than ever. It is an honor to formally nominate Ms. Jenna and Ms. Patsy. speak to the board tonight. We'll start with Mr. Barry Glenn and Antonio Rice for jobs for Virginia graduates. Well, I'm not the old cowboy. It's my last roundup. This was the day I was supposed to retire, but I wanted to come to all the board meetings because we had this uh, Bob still CEO. Sharon Owens, come on up here too. You all the work. Um, you have in front of you the Russell County Career Technology Center. I bring this every year. We go over it briefly. Um, I think it's important to understand that Jobs for Virginia graduates has a kind of an unspoken creed that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And we measure everything. You'll see here the performance of the class of 2019, and that's why, because we give them another year to graduate, we have a follow-up year, too. So it's always a year behind. And look at your numbers. It's amazing. 100% graduation rate. Civilian military job, 74 percent. Positive outcome, 89. Full-time placement, 96. Full-time job rate, 92. Um, 
we have 22 high school programs all over the state, and 11 made this uh, designation this year for the National 505. And the main reason was jobs, obviously. Uh, if the specialists didn't arrange for their kids to have a job by the time uh, the country shut down in March, likely they wouldn't find one. So they've done a wonderful job getting these kids placed. If you look on the right side, the barriers per student, we can't even find out all the barriers. And that's about average for the state, but I suspect it's seven, five, or eight once you start really looking into it because of confidentiality rules and things like that. But if you look, um, in the last three years, Sharon's graduated every one of her students. And in this environment, with all the distractions we have, and especially the challenges in the last six months, that's exceptional. I think this is your seventh year, isn't it right? I think you won this six times every year you've been running it. And that's just amazing to me. Um, I'm also here because I'm passing my somewhat relentless baton to Antonio Rice. He's our new president and CEO. If you're a tech fan, you may recognize the name um, from he played for UVA, a little, you know, a little community college in Charlottesville, and then he played pro ball. But he came to me after he spoke to our students at two leadership conferences, one here at the Higher Ed Center, one in Richmond. He came to me 18 months ago and says, I'd like to be involved. So I got him talking to students. Uh, he was at the Salvation Army. Now he's full time. He started three months ago. And now uh, I'm very enthusiastic about where the program is going. Uh, one commercial. The General Assembly is now meeting to give us our money back. We originally had 1.7 million in the budget, which is a phenomenal figure. We get 573, 776 for the last 10 years every year from the General Assembly. That's how we support 20 programs. Y'all get 25,000, and you did apply for 30,000. So if we get additional funds, you will get another letter from the DBO saying we're going to give you another 5,000. Okay, her. And also we will hopefully add 15 new programs for that money. We don't know how much we get. Uh, it's going to be, quite frankly, don't, don't, don't repeat, it's going to be hard to spend that much money because people aren't hiring new people and it's tough. But you people almost automatically get a second program and another 30000 back. And you certainly have a lot of students over there. And you don't have to hire full-time people. You can hire aides. So that's, they allow us to expand programs without going through the whole process again. But they will send out a cease memo. Um, to every school system in, in the state, so we'll try to get those programs going. It should be about 10 days before we find out if we're getting additional funds. It's nice that we have the, uh, Eileen Fillicorn, who's Speaker of the House, who got the whole amount in the House. The Senate hasn't done it yet, and who knows. But if we get some, you'll get more money first. I wanted to tell you that. So I'd like to introduce Antonio Rice now, just to say a few words, and he's going to give the awards out that were well earned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, evening, actually. Um, thanks for having me. Um, as I come down 81, I saw all the welcoming signs. What's this VT thing that you just all on the buildings? Anyway. Um, and so, of course, I pull up to your wonderful facility. And so, I, I do have a sports background, and um, we would always say the rate of the leader determines the pace of the pack. And so, that facility is something else. But you need somebody in there guiding and working with the students, and Sharon Owens is a star, absolutely hands down. So it's no surprise that you get these stats because you have somebody like this. And so, you know, just a, a quick acknowledgement for to Barry Glenn. You know, Barry has been so committed for the past 24 years um, in regards to him, his leadership that he's brought, his passion, um, and his commitment. Um, I want to say uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was coming up from South Carolina to do another one of the award ceremonies at Smith um, Technical Center. And so I'm going to take that same, that same path. He's been a wonderful mentor. He's been a wonderful friend. And I can promise you that I will most certainly reach and hopefully succeed everything that Barry Glenn has done. So without further ado, I'd like to present to principal the JAG National 505 Recognition um, Russell County Career and Technical Center. That is for you. We've got to have a poster to go along with that. I want to give that to you. So thank you all very much. Great job. Great job. And look forward to meeting you guys and, and working with you more closely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you. Great job, guys. Hope you enjoy your retirement, Mr. Glenn, and we want to thank Ms. Owens and Mr. Raskin for all they do at the vocational school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm finishing 47 years in education. 47 years. And the last 24 has been the best thing I've ever done in school business. And I congratulate the board for supplying half the funds. And I hope we can get you more money in the next couple of weeks. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll spend it. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Brown. All right, Madam Chair, we have John Shell Sutherland, Vice uh, Chancellor Foden. Thank you. Sorry, my husband can't be here. He had a work late. Um, but I have a few questions that I'm really concerned about. The first one is the safety for my kids at their schools. Last year, my daughter had three incidents where she almost got ran over. The, one of those times it almost involved two vehicles. This year, my son and my husband was walking across in a vehicle, four or five cars, just in the back, let their kid out, and then came straight up front and passed the line. Now, what I have here is the handbook from the primary school that specifically says Vehicles dropping off students cannot pass another vehicle in the drop-off line. Now, instead of an officer stopping that vehicle, he just stood there and said, well, he's all the way back there. And then the teacher saying, oh, well, that must be the before school kids. Now, does that really matter? I don't know how many times this is going to happen until someone gets hurt. I don't want to see my kids in the hospital or anybody else's kids. And another concern I have is over these Chromebooks. I've had to get internet at my house just so that my kids can do their schoolwork. Yeah, the teacher says, oh, they'll download it. First week of school, nothing was on their Chromebooks for my kids to do. Called the school. Guess what I got told? Well, you need to take your kids and sit in a parking lot and do their work. I'm sorry, but I have a five-year-old. That five-year-old is going to need to use the bathroom, eat, and have something to drink. Now, how is that right? That is not right at all. I should never be told that. I would not ask you guys to sit in a hot vehicle and do your work. And then, the second week of school, my son comes home and tells me that his teacher told him to go home and figure it out. And he was trying to explain to her that we don't have internet. Well, go home, figure it out, okay. What does that mean to a child, to a seven-year-old? Do you know how scared my boy was because he couldn't get his work on his Chromebook? And then the following week, my daughter comes home, tells me the same thing about her teacher. I get a little upset. That's right, too. Yeah, I've done handle it. I've done actually talk to all the teachers. They did apologize, and I thank them for that. That's what I needed. But I needed a little bit more of understanding as to why my kids were being told that. I would never look at a, someone else's kids and say, well, come and figure it out. I have two in the elementary. Lightning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And one at the primary. When my daughter almost got hit last year, the principal refused to talk to me. Oh, she's been aware. Okay, that doesn't matter. I want to talk to her. Well, she's busy. Okay. I called the school board. I think I talked to Scotty Fletcher about that. He's the only one that calmed me down. Because 
when you're, it comes to your baby about to get hit, that's three times last year. It is the beginning of school, four weeks, and it's already starting to happen again. I want my kids to be safe going to school. I don't want to have to worry about them running into the streets and the, the officer and the teacher just standing there, oh, well, it's okay. It's not okay to me. My kid ends up in the hospital. How do you think I'm going to feel? Or my child is going to feel? It's not right. It needs to stop. I understand. I have had a job at 8 o'clock in the morning. I had to be there. I understand everybody gets in a hurry. I do sometimes. But when it comes to your kids or other people's kids, everybody needs to think about their safety first. Okay, Ms. Sullivan, do you have other concerns or other problems you're having? I'm sure that I do, but I can't think of it right now. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> just talking about my kids getting hit is my main concern. Well, well that concerns us greatly. Yeah. yeah. We promise to uh, look into this and make sure it won't happen again. Which school was that at? Was that Layman Elementary? Or my my well, my daughter last year was at the elementary, and the happened one, the one this year. This year was at the primary school. Thank you. That one now, my husband actually went way too far, but uh, he's upset and mad and aggravated that nothing's being done about this. Well, I mean, appreciate you coming. I was like, wait, no, he was ran. waiting in line to let your child out, right? No, they were walking across. Oh, they were walking They were walking across. Okay. Well, thank you, Miss Sutherland, for coming this evening. And thank I hope you, Brown, you, you will check into this mm -hmm. and give her some satisfaction. And I hope somewhere along the way that there have been some positive things that mm -hmm. you can say that our teachers and their schools well, have Well, I have one to. teacher at the elementary school, Miss Clark, Christy Clark. She's the only one that had, was out there when stuff like that had happened. She actually started walking the day straight to the door because it happened too many times. She, I mean, she's she's awesome. I love her. She's she's the only one that's ever shown me real concern towards this. Well, I assure you, the board is concerned, and we'll ask Dr. Brown to yeah. look into your concerns. And we have resource officers at our schools, and we have well, that resource officer surely didn't duty. act like he cared this morning. And we have bus duty um, personnel, so you're. Your concerns will get addressed. Mm -hmm. Yes. We thank you for coming. Appreciate you coming and letting us know. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Uh, we have Heather and Travis Gilbert. Okay. I guess the biggest question is. Was when I speak, will y'all be able to answer the questions, or is it? Most of the time, uh, Mr. S um, Gilbert, go ahead. The way this is designed is not really a, a dialogue. Um, it's more of you addressing your public concerns. If it's a simple just yes or no question, sometimes that's something that can answer. But really, this, this period is not designed to be a dialogue between the board. If you bring your concerns to the board, and then they'll take whatever action or direct the superintendent to and that's just the way the, the public comment section is designed. Okay, then I guess my question is, when you work, can you address, address the school board? But, I mean, you can address the school board, but the, again, it's not a dialogue. I mean, you bring concerns to the board and then they can look into it. A lot of times you can't just get an answer. It really depends on what it's about. But, I mean, it's not, it's not meant to be... You ask the question, they answer, and go back and forth. But what is this? That's not really what this is designed for. This public comment is for a public concern, and so the board can be aware of it. Because that's what I'm asking this question for, and when can I talk to get my questions answered that I do have? Well, you present what you what you come here for. You you tell us what your problems are, and we have uh, different levels. Dr. Brown, we have different 
depending upon what your problem is with, then it can be directed to where it needs to go that we can hopefully get it solved. We have multiple issues. Our biggest concern, I'll just say, my daughter goes to Botech. She's in high school, been in high school. Been in high school shut down for a week, six days for Friday till they go back Monday. How is she going to make up her time that she misses for a week in Botech? Because Botech is hands on, it's not paperwork. Okay, go ahead. Any other concerns? We sort of do have a time limit, so hopefully you can get those addressed within five to ten minutes. Uh, I really think it's a waste of time. Well, I, I don't think it's a waste of time. So we will, we will, we'll listen and mm -hmm. we'll yeah. make action. We've tried this before. Um, I don't, we do I don't remember you coming to force. We do care, sir. We really do. Um, the issue about Botech, how are you going to take care of our kids in Botech when you keep shutting the schools down? When's it going to be made public? shutting the schools down instead of shutting the schools down an hour after school board's closed, the schools are closed, you should send out messages that your school is closed. And some people don't have internet. Some people don't have access to internet. Simple. It's sometimes it's very, very hard to get to that internet. What's these kids that struggling to get the internet supposed to do how, how how and I mean I know yeah there's hot spots here and there but I you can't stay people, in the car with kids some people the hot spots do not work like high speed internet works it's it's a big problem videos you might as well not even watch them um, one of the biggest questions we have is like the video that's been Sent out, are they, are they monitored or can the teachers just put what they want on us or stuff like that? I mean, who monitors, who, who keeps check on these videos sent out? Who keeps check on what's sent, what's not sent? What are the teachers seeing in response to their videos? Are they seeing the kids? Are they invading the kids' privacy? Um, Zoom, I think it is. They do Zoom, whatever it is. I'm not a computer person, I don't do it. So I'm not involved in it. Uh, another issue, some people don't do social media. And everything that this school board or anything is done, social media. Mm -hmm. If you don't have social media, you don't find out nothing. Why is there not a better way of learning what to do? how to send your kids to school, what to do when school shuts down, what another issue, our kids shut down. My kids went to school all four days. When they come home, they're like, we gotta do virtual. I'm like, how do you do virtual? They like, but we really don't know. So why wasn't the kids instructed on how to do virtual? You send them back for a couple of weeks, you shut them down. They're supposed to do virtual, they have no idea how to do it. I mean, it, there's a lot of issues that this stuff is going on in Unless you really see it, you stand first hand with rural America and, and see it, it's not as easy as you think it is. It's not a high speed internet everywhere. Some places, even the internet you have does not work. You know, you, you can maybe see stuff come through, but you don't watch a video. My, one of my daughters today was supposed to be involved in a Zoom meeting. It's a joke. You, you can't do it. Why is she punished for that? Mm -hmm. Also, some of her. Kids have heard that the teachers was told them if they don't do their stuff on the internet, they get a zero. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can't. I mean, there's big issues with that, and I'm sure you've heard it. I mean, um, my daughter gets calls from her friends for her to help them with work. My daughter's really good in school. I don't know how her grades will be this year because she don't have internet. They call her to help them. Why is there not a teacher involved in helping? 
I mean, if the kids are going to have to teach other kids, mm -hmm. why have teachers? If the internet is going to teach, why have teachers? Why have schools? Why have schools? If, if, um, big, how are you going to make up the time that these kids lost in Votech? How? I mean, and then I was told the health department decides if the school gets shut down. What issue, what does the health department decide? How, how do they decide to shut the school down? School board undoubtedly has no issue whether the school gets shut down or not. The health department says to shut it down, the school board has to shut it down. That's my, I was told that by Dr. Brown. Y'all have no, y'all don't have no control over it. So I was told that there was a survey done at the beginning of the year whether kids want to go back to school, do virtual, whatever. What was the point of having the survey? Right. Where's the results of the survey? Mm -hmm. And what's the questions on the survey? Because I never got a survey. Who was survey? Someone. How many people? People don't have surveyed? internet for it. I don't know how they're going to do it. Is the results online? Is the question is that? I mean, that's some questions I have because I don't have. I don't do social media. I don't have. I don't. It's not good. Big issue with a lot of my kids. We have quite a few kids that come to my house, quite a few kids that talk to my kids. They're not allowed to shake hands at school. Um, no close contact. I understand they go wear face masks. I reckon you can have close contact. I've seen every one of y'all walk by each other. Close contact. Matter of fact, it was handed flaps, close contact. But my kids are told if they shake hands, they're going to get suspended or sent home to do virtual. Um, they touch every door handle mm -hmm. at the school. They touch everything around them at school, but they're not allowed to shake their free hand. Um, I think if they're not allowed to shake their hand, there should be enough staff members there if a door's open. Wipe it off. Wipe it off. Or some, some stuff, I mean, stop punishing their kids. <coughs> Or Mr. Sutherland, we're not. Given. I don't think that anyone's trying to punish your children. Uh, and we'll give it, Dr. Brown, do you have other things on your list? Have you given those to Dr. Brown? The things on the list? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not giving them the list. I, I talked to him one day and it was. Questions not answered. So. Some questions answered, some things not. So. Well, what, what, uh, what did you foresee? That would help you. What, what do you? What, what are you looking for from this board? Answers to my questions. The future of the school. What, right. what y'all plan? Your plan is not not a week from tomorrow. When you make the plans, why ain't they made public? Why are? I mean, not on the internet public. So some people can't get it without complete internet access. Have you ever been offered? what they call the hotspot or whatever. Yeah. Have you ever used one? No. Okay, then. Go okay. someplace and try to use one. It does then you can answer my question. Okay. I'll, I mean, seriously, I just talked about this issue that, or talked to you about that issue. Some places you can get cell phone service, it don't mean this hotspot works that good. We thank you for coming, uh, Mr. Uh, Gilbert. Does any board Anything you'd like to? Well, we will address this and try to we'll try to accommodate you in every way possible. And we because we do care about your kids and we care about their education. Not just my kids. And I look, we care about all these kids. We care about all these kids. One hundred percent, right? Right. Yes, sir. Okay. While it's not one hundred percent of the kids being received the same thing as one of them. Mm -hmm. if, if one kid has high speed. I don't, you know, and this is sort of why it's not designed to be a dialogue, you know, we could be here all day discussing things, and that's why exactly. it's designed for you to present your concerns and they've heard your concerns, and so, um, I, I think it's a problem. Stop here unless you have additional concerns. I don't know. That's what I figured it would be. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh -huh. Thanks, sir. All right, Michael Platt, Mr. Platt. Uh, my main concern is uh, 
I don't really agree with first graders having Chromebooks. The one they're teaching how to write on Chromebooks or having to hold the mouse down with one finger and draw with another finger. My daughter got sent home with a Chromebook. I never even got a paper of consent saying, asking me if, I, if she could have one or not. And I sent it back to school. I called the principal in the site primary school. I said, look, you know, why did she bring a Chromebook home? And she was like, well, we had that extra. We had enough to issue all the first graders Chromebooks. We went in and give them to them. I said, well, that's fine. But do you think that's a good way to teach a kid a first grader how to write? Mm -hmm. I mean, did you all learn how to write on a Chromebook? I know I didn't. Mm -hmm. OK. And uh, secondly, I asked her, I was like, well, you know, what if something happens to this Chromebook? Am I going to be held responsible for it monetarily? And she's like, well, if it's an accident, you know, we'll work with you. And, but if it's something that's done deliberately, yeah, you're going to be held responsible for it. I was like, well, how can I be held responsible for something that I didn't even ask for? I, I never signed a form, never signed nothing saying that she could even have it. And it kind of upsets me. And I'm sure a lot of other parents feel the same way, especially with the first grader. I mean, first grader has no business with the, a computer, a ticket to the World Wide Web where they can look at anything they want to. Mm -hmm. They can get on YouTube and watch very inappropriate stuff if they want to. I mean, you got, I don't think people are thinking this through here. Whoever's making these decisions is not thinking all this through. Mm -hmm. And you know, as far as Chromebooks in middle school, my daughter is 12 years old. She goes to middle school. She has a Chromebook. She's getting on YouTube. She's talking back and forth to her friends. Some some things she talks about, she don't need to be talking about. And she wouldn't have that opportunity if she didn't have a Chromebook. Because she doesn't have a phone. We don't allow her to have a phone because of that reason. She's not responsible enough to have one. But yet, she tells us all the time, well, I have to have this Chromebook because, you know, the school tells me I have to have it. And, you know, how am I supposed to argue with it? Because that's how she does her work on the Chromebook. When I was in seventh grade, all the way up through high school, till I graduated, I never had a Chromebook. I never had a computer. We did computer work at school. They taught us about computers, but we didn't have a mobile take-home thing. I just don't agree with it. It's not good. These kids, that's why kids don't know how to write. People that are graduating from high school right now, they don't know how to write. They can't even have hardly sign their names. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying all kids are like that, but some of them, yeah. You can't, you can't keep in practice of something that you don't do every day, you know? That, that's my main point with the Chrome. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, no one else may have chair's request. We have the delegation available at the end of the uh, agenda as well for anyone present. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I have a small list for the board's review and approval tonight. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion, Madam Chairman, to to uh, accept the resignations as presented. Don't have a statement. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Uh, Mr. Sapolizzo? Yes. Mr. Sapolizzo? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. And Ms. Garrett? Yes. And myself, yes. New personnel and transfers, the new hires, 
Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I have a list for the board's review tonight, the majority of which is temporary employment for the uh, part-time learning center. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve them. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. Do I have a second? Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Mr. Sargent? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Garrett? Yes. And myself? Epstein. Okay, Dr. Brown, that takes us to... That takes us to our action items tonight, Madam Chair. We have two items for the board's consideration. The first one is the second reading of policies under consideration. Um, as, uh, again, members of the Virginia School Board Association, we do receive periodically the SBA policy updates to be examined by our school board members for implementation. Uh, with that being said, the policies under consideration, again, uh, are available under the policy tab under board docs. And the recommendation for tonight is they be approved as submitted. Okay, do I have a motion that we approve? I'll make that motion. Policies. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. Mr. Sakovija? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. Ms. Garrett? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The second item for the board's consideration tonight is a document for uh, our partnership with Southwest Virginia Community College. Uh, the Temporary Learning Center is housed in the area that is under lease by the Southwest Virginia Community College group, and we have a document which basically deals with the liability uh, for our Temporary Learning Center uh, to transfer that liability to Russ Camp Public Schools during this time. Uh, this has been reviewed by legal counsel, and I have that tonight for the board's uh, approval. Thank you, Dr. Brown. I guess we need a, do we need a motion to approve that? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. I have a second? I'll no, second. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs, uh, Mr. Parsons, and Mr. Sakalija? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Parsons? Yes. And Ms. Garrett? Yes. Yeah. And myself? Yes. I, I think we should thank them for their, everything they've done. Absolutely. Thanks to the Board of Supervisors and also yes. the United Way. And I hope yes, thank you. This will be a, make it more convenient for uh, us. We have information items for the Board's review tonight. Uh, our coronavirus update is the first item. and uh, I'll, I'll start with our learning center. Uh, we polled our uh, community, our uh, stakeholders, uh, dealing with students enrolled in Russell County and students of employees of Russell County uh, to see what the interest was for a temporary learning center. We had been contacted by the Workforce Development Board. They had been contacted by the state with the uh, hope that they would explore a partnership to establish these learning centers throughout Southwest Virginia. So that being said, we uh, worked with the Board of Supervisors, as mentioned previously, they are funding the uh, facility through CARES Act funds through the end of the calendar year. And then our friends with the United Way are gonna pick up that starting on January the 1st until we uh, terminate the program. But uh, we are off and going, that started on Monday. We're really excited uh, about that. Additionally, we did bring back on Monday our kindergarten through third grade students four days a week and uh, I, I will be working with the administrators we had our ADM meeting yesterday and I spoke to them about examining fourth and fifth uh, grade the ability to bring them back and uh, I do feel it's the board's uh, interest to consider bringing back all kids as quickly as possible to all of our students and we are going to work on uh, constructing a survey for those people currently doing the hybrid model to see what their interest is and expanding that four days a week. We do have uh, about 34% of our students now uh, that are operating in, on, on a 100% remote model. Uh, so we'll see again how, how their interest is with returning four days a week. My assumption will be that they want to continue with 100% remote model. So we're going to reach out and try to gather some information, fresh information dealing with interest in returning four days a week, uh, and again, we'll be working with our friends with the health department and so forth to be sure that we're doing that in a manner that, that is uh, uh, suitable and appropriate for them as well. 
uh, you know, we continue to uh, purchase and uh, bring PPEs into the schools. We worked with our friends from emergency management uh, over the last couple of days or a couple of weeks actually and secured additional supplies there. Uh, we have, uh, of course, purchased several disinfectant machines, our, our Clorox 360 machines, all of those are in place and being used every evening in our schools. Buses are being disinfected every evening as well. So uh, you know, we'll continue to, to work hard uh, to make the schools as safe as possible. Uh, you know, we do communicate out and try to be as transparent as we possibly can. When we have cases, we do post it on our Facebook page, we post it on our internet, on the website. We also do an all call when we have those positive cases to communicate that out and be as transparent again as possible. So uh, we'll, we'll keep working and uh, keep trying to make it as, uh, as good a situation as possible for our folks. Thank you, Dr. Brandon. Thank you, Dr. Brandon. Madam Chair, the second item I have is, again, an information item, so the board does not need to react to this tonight, but simply to consider this as we move this, hopefully, to an action item for next month. But we have uh, had several discussions uh, within the superintendents and within the uh, leadership here at the school board office considering putting together a coding system for inclement weather. Um, it's uh, much more efficient if we can say one time exactly what we're going to do for the uh, day versus having a situation where we uh, decide to not have school and then we communicate out again to our uh, 10, 11, 12 month employees what the expectation is for them for the day based on the uh, seriousness of the uh, weather uh, issue. So that being said, Madam Chair, I have for the board's consideration uh, a very basic coding system. And this coding system would be such that uh, moving forward, we would simply transition to 100% remote day if we were to have an inclement weather day for our students. And then our 12, uh, 10, 11, and 12 month employees would know what the expectation is for them based on what code. So as you look at the uh, screen, code zero would be, again, all students 100% remote day. 10 month employees work from home, 11, 12 month employees work from home as well. We haven't used or had this type of situation often in the time that I've been in Russell County, we've actually implemented this once. Uh, code one and code two by far is the most frequent. The code one would be 10 and a month employees work from home, 11 and 12 month employees report at 10 o'clock. And then finally, code two would be students 100% remote, 10 month employees work from home, 11 and 12 month employees report as scheduled or as deemed safe. So get here as safely as you can, uh, as soon as you can. So that would be something for the board's consideration. It could be something that we, of course, target just for this year due to our situation with the uh, with COVID and so forth. So uh, that would be uh, you know, something for the board's consideration. Okay, thank you, Dr. Brown. Yes, ma'am. You had the sales tax and the ADM. Our ADM is, uh, is doing well. We're uh, ahead of last year. Uh, at this point in time, we're at 35.56. We finished the year at 35.18. So we're, we're doing well with ADM. Um, and sales tax, at this point in time, we haven't seen um, you know, a significant hit on that, but it has been projected to be a decrease of $147,000 for the year with the recent reforecasting from Richmond. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll, you know, I'll be moving the uh, inclement weather coding system forward um, next month and be more than welcome for any feedback from the board as they think about that. Feel free to give me a call and we'll look at that. Uh, that'll be the uh, focus for uh, next month as far as anything's carried over. Thank you. Dr. Brown, with that, uh, that coding system, that pretty much eliminate snow days? Uh, yes, sir. It would. It would create an environment where we could take advantage of the 100% 100 remote environment model that we do have in place. Our current year is designed to end on 
June the 16th at this point in time as it is. Uh, again, again, very unique year, as, as we've said before. Uh, we most likely will be involved with our athletic program with the structure of the VHSL condensed uh, model uh, for athletics. We probably will be involved with uh, athletics at the high school level all the way through the end of uh, end of June this year. Well, if I may, sir, you mentioned athletics. Uh, I request that you reach out to VHSL leadership and just tell them, uh, encourage them to proceed with the, the sports season for all sports. And you know, in that line, you know, maybe formulate. Uh, a resolution to the governor communicating our desire to get back to more normal in school sports for these kids and that can extracurricular activity but not just sports but the theater and the Olympics. Absolutely, sir. I, I'll, I'll work on that very thing tomorrow. Thank you. And just uh, another thing, uh, you know, I, I'm in the boat. If we send these kids back to school sooner instead of later, and I think mm -hmm. at least Mr. Gilbert's, I mean the Gilbert's and Mr. Platt's problems, a lot of that would be solved if those kids were in school. You know, that they addressed the night, you know, and all that would take care of itself. And so, you know, I mean, about that we really you know, get this survey out like you said you would and, you know, try to really get the ball rolling. Yes, sir. I hear it, and I have three boys, and I want in school. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want, I want to be as safe as possible, but keep all of our kids safe. And I think we need we need them in our in the better education. Yes, sir. Is that all you have, Dr. Brown? Uh, yes, ma'am, sure. Okay, our next meeting will be November the 5th. We have delegation, not on the agenda. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'll be more than happy to turn the podium sure. over to you whether I'd like to speak to the board. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. 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 Table, I left a brochure, and I think it's the third, and um, I put one right here, um, the third brochure in here talks about our grants and scholarships. They are, if a teacher wants to do an online class, wants to do the net enforcement, needs to go back to school, this, this right here, the fall submissions, November 15th. There's a teacher in Scott County that I know that's gotten a grant six out of the last eight years because we give them a new way. So if you apply and it's, you know, got the information that it needs, um, you don't even have to be a member to get it. So if you know a teacher that needs something for their classroom, my daughter got manipulus when she was a first year teacher to teach math. I got a laminator for $500 part of a laminator for my school when I was principal. So the money is given away. So I encourage you, if you know someone, let them know about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Dr. Brown, we need to let our people know about this. Oh, absolutely. I'll speak to Mr. Fletcher and we'll get that out. Yes. Sure. And, we'll, yeah. we'll scan it. We'll email it out scan to everyone. The, the and I, I put them in the box in the teacher's. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. I have, oh, I have oh, put oh, those brochures in the I went to every school in Russell County. Okay. About three weeks ago. Right oh, here. Okay. okay. I just wanted to make sure. But if you want to do that, that's fine. Too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who are mine? Oh, yes, ma'am. I had no intention of speaking to the board. Go right up Sitting here behind Dr. Brown. And when that lady said she was told to take her kids to a hot spot, and he should have said no. Yes, they've been told to go to a hot spot and sit in the car and do this work, this test, that's what you get for a second grade. Mm -hmm. That's never touched a Chromebook before. That has to take a test. 
sitting in a car at the Home Acre Elementary School, taking tests, five tests, that's what you get. You get tears. I can't do this. I've never touched a Chromebook before. We were under the understanding that there would be paper copies available for the kids that didn't have internet. At my house, my cell phone has to sit in the window to even get a call or a text or anything. So we can't get any internet. It's supposed to be downloaded on the computer. When we went to the computer to pull it up, it didn't work. My daughter emailed the teacher, and the teacher, it was while Home Ec Elementary was shut down, the teacher didn't have the internet. She couldn't go on the Chromebook to see what was there. She kept emailing, emailing. We go out to get internet. She would go to the offline to try to get this stuff so that my granddaughter could do it. It wouldn't show up if she clicked the off, offline thing. Finally, after emailing and emailing the teacher, she it said on one of the things, uh, download the textbook. Well, she went to the high school to Miss Kim Cuffin, which is in technology. She couldn't find the textbook. So, emailed again. Finally, she got paper copies and a book to do her work. But what about these kids that their parents work? That it's five, six o'clock before they get home to take them to a hot spot. I had two parents tell me that their kids, and I know y'all say hearsay, whatever, but their kids, they didn't get them to a hot spot in time, their work went in, they received, received zeros because it wasn't turned in by the deadline time. He shook his head on that wall ago when that lady said it. This is not working. My daughter tried to tell the teacher that this stuff was not there to help the other kids. Well, they didn't help anybody else. They just gave her a book for it. You got grandparents raising these kids. If I had to get on one of them books and find this stuff for my grandchild, I couldn't do it. Her mommy has a a degree in digital imaging, working with computers now. It stressed her to no end. It's not working. Our kids are behind. You all are here for the kids, 100% for the kids. Something's got to be done. Mr. Z. You made a comment to me before all this started. I asked you, what are the kids going to do that don't have internet? You said they're going to have the teachers or we'll have to make packets. Yeah, and, and, and I still believe that. I am a former teacher. You know that as I well as anybody. And but it took, I don't us, see that it took us a day and almost a half for somebody to say, yeah, these teachers can make packets. And you know, I think we're also going to have to be way understanding and give a little bit on our expectations. I, mean, I know that, I mean, that may be sounding like I'm contradicting uh, what we're trying to do here, but, but this is a difficult situation for, for a lot of people. We don't have to admit. I live out in Spring City. We're getting this high speed internet now. But I'd say a whole lot of people out from Finney to Big A Mountain to Cleveland are in a real rough position right now. Uh, they have, and I mean, I think we just got to, to look at the big picture and make the best of it. And then, yes, I'm for the kids, you know I am. And my whole career was about kids, and it still is. 
But but it's 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 a sport situation that but given we've never these, seen. These little kids like that. I mean, we're talking his first grader. They can't do it on these computers. I know they have technology, and they deal with computers a little bit. They can't learn. They need paper and pencil. But again, if you give them paper at school, it's not supposed to be touched. You can't touch it. I mean, I know this is a crazy time, and I. But something's got to be done for these kids. But do you think we should bring everybody back as quickly as possible? I do. I said well, it. I think I we said all it think from that. From the beginning, everybody needs to be in school. And uh, my opinion, and it's only my opinion, and I know the CDC and the health department and all that has what they say, but until we get everybody exposed to this, even before the vaccine, whatever, we need immunity to it by getting out in the community, and, and that's just my opinion, but, but when you all are making decisions for these kids, remember my granddaughter with the tears running down her eyes. Well, Dr. Brown, he, he's going to do a survey to try to get to see if we can get the kids back in as quick as possible. He's going to be working on that. We talked about it. And he's going, he's going to be doing But that. I just wanted you all to know, I mean, I'm sitting here behind him when that lady said that, and he shook his head, no, you know, yes. They're ha you're having to go to cars and sit and get a hot spot if you don't have internet. If you don't get it in on time, Parents are saying, my kid's getting zeros because it wasn't in in time. Well, he's told them, so, to, to, he's told them to lighten up on that. If, if, they can, if it comes in later, as long as they get their work done, that it will count. It, it does not get a zero. As long as they do their work, if, even if it's late because of the Internet, that it will count for them. Because I told Mr. Z before this ever started, I'm a bus driver. Yes, ma'am. I know my kids that ride my bus, very, very few of them where I live have internet. And I knew before this started that we were going to have a problem with these kids being able to do this work. Because I, I talked to both Ms. Captain and Mr. Z both before it started. Yes, this is horrible times and, and the, we, we are 100% for the kids and we want to do everything possible to get them learning. And we we're, we want to get them back in just as quick as possible, and so that they can learn and and, and get just get a normal life again. And yeah, I, we know it's hard on on all the families, and we are we care. And the little girl's tears. I want to make me have tears. And I'm sorry, and, and I promise you, we're working on it to do the best we can do. I mean, my granddaughter has the world's best mommy. I mean, she she has went out. She's got internet. She's got her work. They worked even all summer. She got the work from last year. For, you know, but some of these kids don't have that great parent. Right. And some has grandparents raising them. And I mean, you know. And and, we, and, 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 and Dr. Brown has worked hard, hard. All, all this staff, he has worked super hard to try to. to get things better. I mean, he, he's working 10 times harder than he ha ever has. And he's trying. And, you know, it's just this situation. And, you know, and a lot of his hands tied on a lot of things. But he is trying very hard. And and we all, we're, we're all want these kids back. And we want to get an education for them. Because we, we care. That's where we wouldn't even be here. We, you know. Uh, you know, I'm just saying, these, for these littler kids, these Chromebooks are not Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And I want to say, you know, we I get calls from time to time, several years, but we don't know all this unless you don't know, come forward. So you know, I, I'm thankful that you come forward and let us know. Yes. You know what the reality is out here, especially you can. And more people do. More areas. people. I mean, that's not. Right. That's right. You know, I strongly encourage us to work at you. 
Our Madam Chair takes us down to the calendar items with the date of our next uh, school board meeting and any future calendar items. Okay, our next meeting is November the 5th. Of course, our calendar items are <laughs> continuing to work through exactly what we did and presented with tonight. So, and I'm sure and there's not a person that we could not name that has extra to do and more work and more concerns. And that's from every person that works with anything in the school system. And that's for every employee. I couldn't start to name them because every one of them has got extra work and more problems to deal with. And if they hadn't dealt with it last week or today, they'll be probably looking at it tomorrow or next week, some, some new challenge. And our children, I know from the little ones all the way to vocational school to high school, they're facing things they've never faced before. And I'm sure it's, ex it's, it's more difficult for them to get through their work and everything done. And I know our students have probably lost six months of education. We're trying to get all that back that we can with your after school prop, uh, Century 21, your summer schools. You know, we'll do everything that we can. I just thank everyone from the parent to our personnel to our employees and our, our students for trying to work through it and by the help of the Lord I hope all this will soon pass. I hope that the future holds, holds it to be brighter. And that's my hope and, and this board, I mean we're, we all want to get everybody back in school and get everything as normal as possible in the safest way that we can. So, And I'm open and would like to hear anybody else's suggestion, and I'm sure Dr. Brown would too. And I, I would like to expand on what Mr. Uh, Parsons said in regard to Dr. Brown and our staff. They are working hard. It is a difficult situation, and I think everybody understands that. We're all, you know, and it, it's just going to take more time to work out the bugs in the system. And But again, I, I want to go back to what I said. I honestly believe we need to be more understanding give a little bit, help these kids out uh, every way we can from the teachers all the way down uh, to every member on the staff. Make sure that their needs are met. Uh, I know it's tough on parents, uh, frustrating, uh, but, and, but it's that way for all of us. And again, I think Dr. Brown's doing a great job. I don't think anybody would work any harder than he. He's worked at this, and uh, I, I'm just happy we got him, to be honest with you. And, 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 I want him to continue to do what he's doing. And Dr. Brown, I mean, he, he works right here as a, a, a prime example. He, he works weekly and daily probably with these regional, Region 7 superintendents, and that's superintendents from all of our surrounding counties. And we look, they look at everything. I mean, this is a board, I mean, we don't look at every, um, we're not given every, every, number every day like they are but we are constantly we're emailed constantly to update us and and it's it's trying times but we have to we have to deal with it and do the best that we can and be as safe as we can and i really believe we're he's trying all the staff trying and we just need people to let us know what we need what they need from us and we will try to help and and we need to thank the people for our food tonight. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's a Swords Creek and Bell. Swords Creek and Bell asking to thank them. And I think we need to thank our resource officers. Uh, I think they do a great job in you know, keeping safety in our schools. And I, I really don't think that uh, we should ever be without them. So, and, and, and Dr. Brown, I, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, he's he's right but, uh, you know, with people 
dropping off kids and, and bringing kids and that sort of thing. You know, need to be extra vigilant uh, of the warning. And I would ask all of our personnel, that's uh, our resource officers, our bus duty people, because, you know, that would be a great tragedy to have a child. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. They have the authority to write yeah. citations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they need to start doing it. Yes. Yeah. Stop, stop that stuff from happening, I think. That's what we need. For sure. Yeah. And we've had employees and we've had students quarantined from this virus. Mm -hmm. We've had personnel sick from this virus. And uh, I hope them all speedy recovery and them to get back to their place as soon as they can. And I personally have not known anyone that has, has died from it, but now it, it is serious, and anyone that doesn't think it is, it is serious, and some people, it affects you know, a lot worse than it does others. So. And anybody else have anything? If not, Thank everybody. Thank all y'all. And please, more people come out and let us know what, what you need. And we will work with you. Because we, we want all the kids to thrive. So if we don't have anything else, I'll take a motion that we uh, adjourn. I make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. And uh, I have a second. Thank you, Ms. Garrett and Mr. Chief.